Chills run down your spine. You break into a cold sweat. Your heart begins to pound. You are afraid. Tonight, on the scariest places on earth, an exorcism in England. Anybody tells you a ghost can't hurt you, they don't know what they're talking about. We just don't want to be here. I believe what we have here is something extremely evil. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command all evil spirits to leave this house. Not good at all. Not good at all. An expert. Two girls. Their heads chopped off. Nobody deserves to die like that. It's annoying what happened, knowing what was in there. And when you go in and you sit in the dark, you can feel it. The dormitory of death. A student committed suicide under strange circumstances. All the strange stuff started happening. I decided not to stay in my room anymore. There was something up there. The horror movie waiting to happen. She's standing right here. What is it that makes a place scary? A chill in the air? Sinister shadows? Or is it something more? Something unseen? Freshman students at Ohio University found out that although everything looked innocent on the outside, on the inside, this college campus harbored a history of horror. According to the British Society for Psychical Research, the 13th most haunted place on Earth is Athens, Ohio. I think it's the combination of things here in Athens. You have strange things, ghosts, a poltergeist activity. The room with the 666. Wait a minute, let me figure this out. Yeah, a spooky cemetery. You throw in a crying angel. Uh, a haunted mental health center, uh, residence halls that uh, have ghostly inhabitants walking the halls at night, and you end up with a pretty, pretty spooky, but pretty sp <laughs> I can't name one person I know on, on campus, and I know quite a few people that haven't had some experience or know someone that's had an experience. People started telling me, oh, you live in the haunted room in Wilson Hall. Lights? curling irons, radios, all would go on and off on their own. You can hear what sounds like marbles going across the ceiling. All this strange stuff started happening. Uh, things started flying around the room. You couldn't really even make out her face, but you could see through her. Sometimes we'd hear rattling inside. There was a distinct sound of somebody or something moving things around in the room that we had just come out of. I decided not to stay in my room anymore. I stayed with friends. I've met a couple people that have felt very uncomfortable here from the start and said that they will never ever set foot in Athens, Ohio again. You'll be surprised how many people call you and say, oh, you won't believe what's going on in our hall right now. The Spook File is a collection of newspaper and eyewitness accounts of unexplained events in Athens. The spook file is the most heavily used item in our department. Yes, there are all kinds of unusual events and unexplained events that may be paranormal, and there are certainly a lot of unexplained events that uh, never end up with any resolution. Documents in the spook file reveal a disturbing link between five local cemeteries and the town of Athens. When these five cemeteries are connected, they form a pentagram around the city of Athens with the center of this being at the very center of campus. As you branch out, you begin to hit residence halls and other, the, the ridges, the mental health center, and you hit areas that, uh, that are just chock full, really, of, 
of ghost stories and of legends behind them. There are several reasons why there's so much stuff going on here and I'm going to explain a few of them. I decided to take people out into where it actually happens. Sometimes we see some stuff that we really just can't, can't explain away. In 1873, the Athens Lunatic Asylum opened its doors. The Ridges at Night is a, I think, a horror movie waiting to happen. Part of me is really excited to go into the Ridges because it's an opportunity that not a lot of people have. Um, to be able to get in there and explore and see what we can find, and there's so many legends. Originally, when it opened its doors, uh, it was a big sign over the wrought iron facade was the Lunatic Asylum. Now, of course, it has this new name, the Ridges, to help describe, perhaps, its geographic look, a structure of 18 million bricks. And there on the top of this hill are these Victorian, uh, beautiful but very spooky, very unsettling buildings. When you imagine what a 19th century mental hospital would have looked like, this is it. There are some of the rooms you can look through and still see shackles on the wall where the inmates were, were shackled. Okay, now you're in the basement of building 18. Everything's connected by either the basements or tunnels, which you see the tunnel going through down at the end of it there. Oh, look at, look at this. New patients, records 1943, 1945, 46, 48. The asylum was a regular stop for a physician who conducted extreme medical procedures. He was known as Dr. Lobogamy. He would travel around the country in, in, in a station wagon and his little tools, you know, his, his ice picks. And this guy could do up to 20 lobotomies a day because it would only take 30, 40 seconds to run that ice pick through somebody's temple and spin it around a little bit and destroy the frontal lobes. And then off he'd go. disappeared. They searched the institution three times, couldn't find her anywhere. The family had missed her and inquired as to where she was. So they had made searches and and I guess they had made several searches, you know, like in two week intervals, but they, they never found her. Sometimes you'll actually look up there and you'll see the window and they see something peering down upon them, uh, which obviously creeps anyone out. Many people report an apparition. And in this one window, you could just barely see a presence. I promise you, I know it sounds exaggerated, but you could tell there was something up there. Year after year after year of sightings of uh, a woman moving from room to room um, through the windows. Okay. Well, yeah. We're going to see what's going on. It's around the corner. I thought he went over here. Oh, oh God! Bats are not fun. Oh, when the missing woman's body was eventually found, it had left a bizarre imprint. And she come over, possibly, to look out the window. Maybe to see somebody to yell for help. But she took her clothes off and folded them real neatly and stacked them in the window. And then she laid down here. Everything. You can see where she laid down. It just feels, it feels yeah, funny. Like I got chills when I walked in here. Really? In 1981, a student who touched the stain claimed the dead woman's spirit followed her back to her dorm room. One night she was asleep. She opened her eyes and saw a face floating level with her head. It was a woman's face. This, of course, this of course freaked her out greatly, really frightened her. No one heard anything for know, three or four days. They went in to check on, on the student to see, to see what was wrong. She had killed herself in Wilson Hall. I just hope nothing followed me out. Coming up next, entering the suicide room. This is the student room. We're going in. We're going in. She's right here. She's standing right here. <laughs> Ah! 
Athens is surrounded by cemeteries. All the strange stuff started. Uh, things started flying around the room. The ridges at, at night is a, I think, a horror movie waiting to happen. And this guy could do up to 20 lobotomies a day. You could just barely see a presence. You could tell there was something up there. She had killed herself in Wilson Hall. In 1981, a resident committed suicide after claiming to be haunted by a woman who died in the Athens Lunatic Asylum. A student on the fourth floor committed suicide in under strange circumstances, and Ever since then, it has really held the reputation as the most haunted place on campus. Just do me a favor, and everybody just sort of crouch down and, and uh, get a good hold of this grass, feel the ground. The ground you're feeling right now is Indian burial ground, sacred ground to Native Americans. So this has been a uh, holy grave site for centuries. Um, if you guys are ready, we'll go ahead and uh, start heading into Wilson and see what we can come up with, see what we can find. Let's do it. You guys set? All right. All right. Most people never get the chance to see what you guys are about to see. What we're going to do is, again, we're right here at, at the gateway to Wilson. Uh, the most haunted room on campus is just four flights of stairs straight up. All right, let's head on up. Like I said, four flights right up here is... We've had several students with a lot of what I've heard referred to as like a psychic slap in the face where you walk into a place and you're hit by something that makes your hair stand on the end and puts you in a really uneasy, uneasy state. It's a really creepy building in it's, It is. It is. You're absolutely right. Right here through this door is, uh, is pretty much right where it happens. This is the hallway where uh, most of the ghostly activity is centered. You guys ready? Yeah. I said we've looked out. I've got the key. Uh, I got the key from the university to, to open the the door here. Uh, come on up here, and I'll show you guys something on the door, and then we'll we'll fill you in on the story a little bit more. This is the door where people say that sometimes you can see a, an outline of a demonic face take place. It's in the wood grain. Let's see if we can see it. It's a little. Yeah, right here. See the oh eyes? My God. Do you see it, Amy? Yes. Do you see it? Do you see it? Yes. Horns right here. Oh, the geez. eyes. Oh. It's right there. Right there. Here's, oh the, here's the story. There was a student. She, uh, she was into practicing the black arts, whether it was uh, some sort of perverted witchcraft or, or demonic worship, we don't know. But very soon after she moved in, people on the floor began witnessing very strange phenomena. At night, they would hear chanting coming from within the room, chanting and strange, guttural, growling sounds. Books would fall off of bookshelves, uh, brushes would fly across the room, doors would slam themselves shut with no wind. Following that point, that night of terror where no one could sleep, they didn't hear from her again. Three or four days later, the RA, the resident assistant, became concerned and keyed into the room to find that she had committed suicide. But before she had done that, she had smeared symbols and words all over the walls in her own blood. After that, the university cleaned up the room and the students, uh, new students moved in the next year. But sure enough, they weren't in the room but a few days when things began to move. Doors would slam, drawers would open and shut. And right there on the wall, that red blood began to seep through coat after coat of paint. And that happened no matter how many times they painted it over. Eventually, no one would live in the room. So it was turned into a boiler room that we're gonna see. We're going in, okay? We're going to go on in. Okay. Come on in. Come on in. If you come right over here, you can see where the wall was taken out. That's the wall that had the blood coming through it. The university, the only way to stop it was to completely destroy the, uh, another door slam. The only way to do it was to completely take out the wall. It was the only way to stop that from coming through. Ah! Ah! Oh! Can we go? Oh, it's just a board. It's a board. It's a board. Okay. All right. Do you guys want to go? Do you want to get out of here? All right. Let's go. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Let's get. Yeah. Yeah. Let's let's get out of here. Oh, 
what happened? There was a knock on the door. Yeah, that's on that one. Like a chain oh my god. like that. Oh my god, I'm breathing so hard right now. She's right here. She's standing right here. <laughs> She's got some serious chills. I just want to go. All right. Outside. Okay. All right, let's, let's get the door open and get out of here. Right. Uh, let's get the door open. All right. No. <laughs> no, we need to go. We need to go out this way. We need to go out here. That was not a jingle. That was a knock. Yeah. That was a push. Knock. I didn't hear it. I was still yeah, in the back. That was a. Uh, 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 uh. <sighs> I can't. I can't. <laughs> I'm sweating. So yeah, I, I, my heart. Is that my, the room? my heart is racing. That's the room. Well, that's the room at the end of the hall, right there. You know, you hear stories about stuff that you know this room's creepy or whatever, and you show up and it's a room. But mm, that was. It's got something to it. No, yeah, that was that was definitely one of the the most chilling places I think I've ever been. Coming up next, a small town's violent past. Two girls, their heads chopped off, his face was just scooped out, and everything was gone. Nobody deserves to die like that. Anybody tells you a ghost can't hurt you, they don't know what they're talking about. And a family terrorized by an evil spirit. I command all evil spirits to leave this house. It's not good at all. Not good at all. generally thought to be the one place in the world we feel most protected and secure. But after the sanctity of an Iowa house was ripped apart by a horrific crime, this once safe family dwelling wasn't so safe anymore. Velisca, Iowa. The people in Iowa are good people. We all care about each other. We look after each other. Villisca is a beautiful town. But like all small towns, we got our secrets. The house. What happened that night in that house? Nobody deserves to die like that. Speaking of that house, why didn't they just let it go? Why does somebody have to decide to fix it up? In 1994, Darwin Lynn bought the house and began restoring it. After I started working on the house, I did have people have experiences in the house. The pantry seems to have I don't know what it is. There's a force or something there that creates a real cold. The hair stands up on their arms. Oh, I'd never been in the house at night by myself. Uh, I, uh, and I've never had any desire to stay in the house. There's something there. Paranormal investigator Dave Christensen examined the house. We've noticed that a lot of times when people move into old houses and start restoring them or remodeling them, a lot of times it awakens a spirit. The first reaction downstairs was fairly normal, just a regular house. The living room and the kitchen were normal. We went upstairs to the second floor. The second floor was really, really cold. I had an uneasy feeling. Monday morning, the 10th of June, 1912, the local town marshal came and went through the house and he found uh, two girls in the northwest bedroom over here, uh, their heads chopped off with an ax, and found husband and wife, Joe and Sarah Moore, and then in the south bedroom, the four children. They were all killed in the same way. All of them were apparently asleep when they were struck. The killer had picked up an axe in the backyard. All the victims were hit in the head from the chin up. The two adults had been just repeatedly struck. His face was just scooped out and everything was gone. And there were bits and pieces of bone and hair mixed in the bedding. The other one who had been struck most often was the 
wife, and she had been struck primarily with the blade of the axe, so that the first cuts were above the chin, but the face had been somewhat reduced to slices almost. Some people were crying, some were just quiet, like in shock, I guess. Seemed like they were all scared to death, because it made no sense. Could have been them. I was good friends with two little girls, Lena and Catherine. I saw them the morning before a Sunday school. Then all of a sudden, they were gone. It's knowing what happened, knowing what was in there. And when you go in and you sit in the dark, you can feel it. It, it just consumes you. Dave Christensen videotaped ghostly orbs around the beds, which he believes are the victim spirits. Lena. Lena. An orb, sometimes you can see them, most of the time you can't. Some of them are blue, some are red, some are orange different colors of light. Why they're that way, I don't know. It could be because of the person's aura, the energy, the essence of the body that is being transmitted through the air. In 1917, the murder investigation was officially closed. No one was ever charged with the crime. They never caught who did it. But there was that photograph that was taken the day before. He was a stranger. But when I look at that, that photograph, see that man's face, I get a chill. Paranormal activity increased as Dave Christensen continued his investigation. A newspaper reporter from Shenandoah was here. We were showing her around and she was getting ready to go into the attic. And she opened the attic door and she went to step in and something physically pushed her back. I tried to walk into this room and I just couldn't do it. I felt like there was some kind of invisible wall in, in my way blocking me from entering that room. I don't know if it was emotional or what it was or just fear, but I just felt like I couldn't go into this room. A lot of people think he got in the house when they were at church and that he hid in the pantry or, or the attic. But one thing was sure, he was there, waiting for them to fall asleep. One of the first evenings we were here up in the attic, kind of a creepy, eerie feeling for a good 45 minutes to an hour. It felt like something passed by me. And uh, right after it did, it went bolting past Dave and down the stairway. And it just felt like just an ice cold breeze going through the whole house. I've always been spooked by that house, especially after the restoration. It's just a feeling. Some in Villisca believe the restoration of the house stirred up more than the victim's spirits. They believe the spirit of the killer has also returned. When you're in there, and he's in there, and he's around you, you can feel him. You can hear him moving around. You can start feeling the energy build. You can start feeling your heart beat faster start getting more nervous, more anxious. You start wanting just to get, get out. Meliska lost its innocence that night in 1912. You're never safe in your own bed, in your own house, in your own house. Coming up next, something here that is inhuman. An exorcism in England. I command all evil spirits to leave this house. It's not good at all. Not good at all. It's commonly thought that only people can become possessed. 
by evil spirits. But as was discovered in the small hamlet of Hayden Bridge, England, places can also become possessed. The village of Aidenbridge, England was shaken by a terrifying event. A home in the village was said to be possessed by demonic forces. An exorcism was believed to have driven the evil spirit from the home. In 1999, a family ignored the stories of demonic possession and moved to Hayden Bridge. We, we had heard some stories about the place being haunted, but we'd been a bit of a, a skeptic. Never believed in anything like that. We bought the hotel in November um, of last year and nothing really happened for the first uh, three, four months. But then things started happening. <laughs> Elaine and I were sitting in the the sofa one night um, watching television and the door opened and the sofa moved about three inches towards the TV with us both sitting on it. There's a smell, you get a, a smell at the top of the stairs and it lasts for seconds and then disappears and then comes back again. The possessing spirit seemed to be drawn to the youngest child. Our son started seeing shadows in his bedroom. They looked like people. Uh, they had head and shoulders. They could hear them breathing and see them breathing. There's got to be something. And we believe that it's something here that is inhuman. I think it's a ghost. Desperate for answers, the family sought help from paranormal experts. It's typical of many of the buildings that we go in that are haunted. Simply because it's made of stone. Stone is like a microchip. It holds in the vibrations of the people that lived here for hundreds of years. These old places act as magnets. And they draw entities in. The parents in this case are doing a very wise thing. And they have temporarily moved the children out of the the family while the discussion about this situation is going on. Whatever is here has taken over our life. There is, it's just a horrible sense that you're being watched or being followed. What, what was the first thing that happened that really caused you some concern? When our son had wakened up about half past three one morning, um, I went through and lay down beside him till he went to sleep and I was just lying watching him as he, as he fell asleep and it was just a dark shadow passed in between us and I just could not see him even though I was only six inches from him and the room just went icy cold. There is certainly evidence here that there is something beyond the realm of just the human element that is in this home. To me it's oppressive. There is an oppressive feeling. It doesn't feel like the energy of a small child's room. It's not good at all. Not good at all. Whoa. The investigators suspected that the paranormal activity was linked to the hotel's history as a 15th century courthouse. The courthouse was in actual fact the dining room area of the Anchor Inn. What is now the hotel parking lot was once a gallows. People were hung out where the car park was. We know of at least two, but there's probably many more. A lot of folk who were hanged were also decapitated. Many of them were innocent, and they would curse their executioners. Areas can be cursed, we know that for a fact. I can tell that this dog is disturbed. The dog has been awake all night long because it's frightened of something that's here. Animals have a very high degree of sensitivity and it is visible to him. 
He can feel it, he can sense it. It's making him terribly uneasy. That night in the hotel, the Warrens encountered what they believe was the demonic spirit. I can feel somebody touching my arm. And it, it's, it, it's pushing right against the covers. Right now, it's pushing right against the covers. Is it still pushing? No, I don't feel it as much right now at all. Three o'clock is very important to us. That's the devil's hour. Anything that comes in threes is an insult to the Trinity. Anybody tells you a ghost can't hurt you, they don't know what they're talking about. And I believe what we have here is something extremely evil. And the only way you can get rid of that is through what we call the rites of exorcism. Now I want it to be known that I am not an exorcist. I've had to do this in emergencies. I consider this an emergency. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. I command you, every unclean spirit, in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, that you come out and depart from this family, from this home. spirits to leave this dwelling, to leave this family in peace. In the name of Jesus Christ and the blood of Christ, the martyrs and the saints, I command all evil spirits to leave this house, to leave this family in peace. Minister Charles Morton attempted to contact the nine spirits to aid in the exorcism. Now, once you link, you'll find that the energy level will start to rise Dear Father, once again we make supplication on behalf of a family who have suffered disturbance and upset. And so we say, to God our praise, Amen. 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 An ancient spirit make its presence known. Brothers, this is White Cloud, and I give my blessing to all those who work in the name of the Almighty. We give you thanks for your wish to bring that sweet harmony and balance back into this family. Moments later, another spirit came forward. This is Jeremy. Thank you all, and take our love and blessing because we join with you in asking to restore the love and harmony for the family. Oh dear, they don't often do that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, you certainly don't have to be psychic to realize that there is a great weight kind of relieved in this area. The exorcism was over. Again, it seemed the town of Hayden Bridge had been purged of its evil spirits. Even though things have quietened down, the lows be that fear. The experience was so disturbing the family sold the Anchor Hotel. We're frightened here. We're leaving. We're leaving here. We just don't want to be here. So, what is it that makes a place scary? Most often, it isn't what we can see, but what we cannot see, the unknown. That's what you'll find in the scariest places on Earth. I'm Linda Blair. Good night.